Hello everyone, uh, this is another tokenomics walkthrough, this time we'll talk about Immutable X tokenomics. Uh, yeah, as always I've written a piece on this a while ago, and this time I want to walk through this um, diagram just to walk you guys through what happens. So Immutable X, what they're trying to build is a layer 2 scaling solution specifically for NFTs. Um, and the the need for that comes from the fact that of course um, layer one ethereum is super expensive to transact on and not just i mean if you if you want to transact a one point a one million dollar uh, crypto punk then yeah you, you might be willing to fork out a couple of a couple of dollars like 30 or 50 to transact that thing and then you have that security of the mainnet but if you're talking about games like um, uh, Gods Unchained, where you, which is like a trading card game, and you have some nice trading cards that you get, and and you want to mint these and give these out to to users, those transaction fees of thirty to fifty dollars, they could immediately can't kill the whole game. Like it won't work that way if the transaction costs are so high. So that's where Immutable X comes in and they say, hey, we're going to use um, a bit of this advanced technology around rollups and layer two to build a solution where games can mint these nfts and use these nfts much faster and much cheaper than on layer one but because we're going to build a layer two and not just any side chain we'll have the security of layer one and how this works is that on ethereum layer one we have uh yeah a couple of smart contracts that they for, for NFTs and, and depositing tokens, basically the whole bridging mechanism to get tokens from layer one to, to layer two. And they use uh, Starkware in the background. Um, that's, check that out, it's super interesting um, software company on on zero knowledge proof rollups mainly is what they do. And they offer these kind of solutions for that. And zero knowledge proof rollups means you, on layer two, you kind of run this a Merkle tree to keep a state of all the transactions and and what that means it's um, so there if you want to deposit from layer one to layer two you put something into this smart contract and then the smart contract will will basically mint tokens um, in equivalent to that what was deposited on layer two and then you can use these on layer two to transact so I can send my token to you and um, that will be recorded in this Merkle tree on layer two so we have a, a complete state so just to ensure that there's no tokens that can be minted or anything like that. And then once in a while, um, there's these batches that run that would calculate a complete state of this um, into a proof. And that's what they what they call these zero knowledge proofs. They would, and that's a very a a cryptographic, um, needs a lot of resources and, and compute power uh, calculation. They would do that and put that and roll this back down to layer one. So then on layer one, you have this verifier that can then look and, and see like, okay, all the states are correct in this rollup. Looks like everything is, is working properly on layer two. And that allows um, users to withdraw their tokens from layer two back to, uh, back to layer one. So super interesting technology. And that basically runs on this um, Stark ecosystem. There's other uh, rollup technologies. I've, I've written a whole piece on that. Uh, if you want to get into that, check that out. But yeah, basically it's a scaling solution for NFTs that we're talking about. And on this immutable X infrastructure, what they're doing is they're, they want to cater for NFTs to be traded and used in games. So they provide a whole host of, of software to, to run this. And that that's like a, they have a shared order book. So you can trade these NFTs with anybody on the layer two solution. Um, they have their own marketplace that kind of uses that shared order book to, to trade NFT. So you could trade your gaming cards or other in-game items that you might get out of games. They have an SDK um, where which games can use to do, to develop stuff upon. They have a linking solution that links the layer one wallet to a layer two wallet. So if you transfer your ETH from layer one to layer two, that kind of takes care of you and ensures that you have your wallet on layer two. And then there's... Um, APIs to access all of these services right? like an API would be something where a game could call that to easily mint an NFT and yeah that, that's kind of um, brings me to the games so there's different games like Gauze Unchained it's like a card game um, Illuvium they're building um, I think it's like an MMO that they're building 
Ember Sword, CSGO, where, where you can have different skins that are minted and created um, and, and then reflect basically on-chain. And um, yeah, so these games, they can, so anybody can now build these games and they don't have to worry about this underlying infrastructure. They could essentially just use Immutable X's infrastructure to, to do all that, right? So they could call the API, transfer tokens, mint an NFT, trade them and do all that stuff. And the the heavy lifting in the background, the roll-up service, making sure the stuff gets down to Ethereum, the low gas costs if users want to withdraw tokens to L1, deposit tokens, all of that is in place um, by Im Immutable, right? So that's kind of the, the the basics of what they're trying to achieve. Now let's let's maybe look into how users would interact. Obviously users or a player, they would connect their wallet to this layer two solution. They might have transferred some ETH to layer two. They might have not. They might just play a game like Gods Unchained and during playing, they would earn some interesting gaming card and they would get that gaming card into their wallet on layer two. And then they could go to the marketplace and sell that gaming card for some ETH or from DAI. And then they could withdraw that DAI from layer two back onto layer one and use it there uh, use it there to do something else. So that's kind of the whole dynamics and how the user gets involved. Now let's look into what this IMX token does because they have uh, minted or they have or planning to mint um, 2 billion of these IMX tokens. They're, they're available already um, and the IMX protocol or the Immutable X protocol, which, which kind of makes use of that token, uh, yeah, they're doing a few things with that. Um, and, and this is kind of interesting because I've always had the question like I, I, layer two, you don't really need a blockchain. What do you need a token for? And the obvious answer would be to, um, yeah, kind of incentivize users, um, grow the ecosystem and make sure people keep playing and, and use your system. So that's what it's for. And they have um, a couple of di different things in their, in their protocol. The one thing is um, governance and grants. So you can vote on token related issues, what they're going to do with these tokens. Um, and uh, vote on grants that might go out to different different protocols, right? So we have this one here where they fund new developments out of their IMX treasury, so it might pay that out to protocols. They can then use that to, to build out stuff. Token holders, so people just incentivize people holding their IMX token. They, uh, yeah, they'll allow them to vote, but also they'll get some reward if they do certain things. So in this case, if they hold IMX tokens, if they vote in governance, so they, they want people to be active in this governance process. So this is an interesting thing to not just stake, where like th that would usually be something for investors to just like buy tokens, stake them and, and, and earn yield, but they want activity. So they, they will kind of measure and only reward you if you actually vote uh, and participate in governance. And then the other thing you need to um, hold some sort of NFT in-game item. So you have actually used these games and, and did stuff in the ecosystem. This, this, this is an interesting way to use a token, right? To really get people to use your system and do, do something in your system. And um, yeah, then I guess one source of, of revenue for the Immutable X protocol would be these, these fees. So like I said, the games, they can use their APIs to mint trade, transfer tokens and do all that kind of stuff with the NFTs. And they would... Um, they would charge a 2% fee on the sale of NFT trades. And 20% of these 2%, they would be used to buy AMX, uh, sorry, IMX on the market and put that into this um, reward pool that get, then gets paid out to the holders. So there's kind of this circular thing, right, where they create a demand for IMX and then redistribute that to the holders that will hopefully hold it and uh, create, like get, get further rewards from that. And then on the other side, uh, part of these fees, they would go to the protocol treasury and they also have some mechanism to uh, yeah, reward players and users based on um, yeah, how much they, they play the games and really use the ecosystem. So yeah, I guess from a solution perspective, this layer two stuff is super interesting and the fact that they're building something um, where, where games can scale, um, I think that there's a high need for that given that there's so many PTE games at the moment. And the other thing is, uh, yeah, how they use this IMX token to incentivize and encourage usage of their ecosystem. Cool. Hope that was helpful.
I'll, yeah, put a link to the document, um, to the article of this down below. Um, thanks for watching.